Thanks, Cahirlach, uh, and uh, thanks, Minister, for joining us along with your officials. Um, certainly, the past few days have been nothing short of extraordinary, uh, and for the wrong reasons, may I ask? May I say? Once again, we have the RTE drama um, escalating into a, another fiasco. Can I just ask, firstly, Minister, at what point uh, did you begin to doubt the capacity of the former chair uh, to lead the board and to initiate the much needed change uh, and reforms within RTE? Uh, in the last week, to be honest, Deputy, um, I, I know there was a, an error in, in the early days of this um, in, a, in a committee hearing, but I, I really felt I'd give the, the benefit of the doubt for, for, for stability reasons in, in relation to not being informed of the, 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 the resignation of, or for seeking the resignation of Dee Forbes. But it, just in the last week, it was because of the, the, the line of questioning um, was, was so direct and to, to, to not, and again, I'm saying I don't believe it was intentional in any do, shape or form. Do you not think she was worth persisting with? Well, you see, it gets to a stage where if you're asking direct questions on a many occasions in a week and you're not getting the accurate she, information. She, she was a woman of integrity, a woman of vast experience. She had presided over the RTE debacle for the past 15 months. Um, was the writing on the wall for her before the primetime interview? And I, I don't disagree with you um, in relation to her being a woman of integrity and the, the sheer commitment and dedication she, she gave in the last 15 months. That's, I'm not disputing that in any shape or form. I absolutely agree with you. But as the Minister for Media, as I said, I must be able to rely and feel absolutely confident that I'm getting all the facts, um, and especially when I'm probing for these facts um, on numerous occasions. And, and if I'm not receiving it, I, I don't know how you expect the Minister for Media then to, to have, to be, to, to be able to operate Minister, when you, you said, can't rely yeah. on accurate information. Minister, you said that you were shocked that RTE Primetime were aware of the information um, that was withheld by the Chair. Um, have you initiated any inquiry into how RTE Primetime got that information? No, I, I, I didn't say that. I, I said when, on my way, on my approach to Primetime, I became aware of other journalists uh, having this information, and I don't understand how, how they got it. It's not something that I wanted out there. I wanted to to definitely have the opportunity to, to talk to the then chair without that. Okay, and can, can I ask, are conversations with you, the DG and the chair held in a private capacity? No, my officials um, are, are with me. Okay, so there was how many people in the room during the two meetings last week? Um, four, four, five, six, six of us. So do you, uh, and the DG and chair. Do you feel that there was a complete failure in, in relation to the duties of all parties who attended that meeting to protect the information that was in that meeting and the questions that were asked? Oh, well, no. What, 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 what emerged to, to journalists was what happened on the Thursday um, when, when the record was corrected, that I'd been given the informa incorrect information on Monday and Wednesday. On Monday and Wednesday. Yeah, so on, that was that emerged on the Thursday. So I think okay. everything was protected and, on the Monday and, and Wednesday because, as and far how, as we were concerned, at the end of Wednesday, we had you, all the correct have information. You asked, have you asked the question how they actually uh, obtained that information? Because certainly, in your statement, you say that you were scheduled for prime time to discuss the league, the, 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 the legal advice, and also the public funding model. But something significantly changed. No, what I said, it, was, it wasn't primetime journalists who were telling me that the news was going to break. It was other journalists outside RTE who were telling me the news was about to break. So why, so why did you even speak about the chair of RTE at that during that interview? So I, I f felt to, to, to be transparent that I, it needed to be flagged that I was, there was an issue about to break and I was willing to, to, to speak to it. Um, but you didn't have all the factual, accurate information uh, at that time? 
In, in relation to what, Deputy? In relation to the press statements that were released on Friday from both the board, um, from the chair in her resignation letter, and also from the DG. Because subsequently, on the Friday, we had multiple press releases clarifying the situation and the discrepancy around what your department knew, what the actual chair knew, um, what the DG knew, and what the board knew. Well, I knew what had happened on the, the Monday and Wednesday. Um, and I knew that in those meetings, the, the chair had said she had no role whatsoever. I knew that in those meetings, she'd actually spoken in the future tense, that in future, um, the reforms um, mean that we will in future have a role in approvals. Um, so she actually clarified the fact not only, you know, was not only was she giving the information, we certainly, you know, did not have any role in this in any shape or form, but in future, the Remuneration Committee will have a role. You said in your, your opening statement that it indicates that you didn't re receive any formal communication. Can I ask, when previously did you receive formal communication on any issues in relation to the, the, the changes that were being implemented or the reforms that were being implemented into RTE? On, on September 5th, um, I've mentioned a letter that I received from the, from the chair with, um, in relation to reforms that were underway or planned, and there was an annex with that. Um, but it did not include a reference and how to severance packages. Are they email, are they a phone call, are they written? That's an email directly to me. Can I ask just in relation to your officials, in September 2023, the department received the new terms of reference uh, introduced for the RT Renumeration Committee. Is that correct? No. So that was never received? No. Uh, it was received in, in December, or November 30th, but, December 1st. Um, were there questions that should have been asked by your officials or yourself, Minister, in relation to the Public Accounts Committee hearing in September that discussed the provisions around terms, around pay and conditions that must be approved by the committee and that these measures were a broader set of actions aimed at strengthening controls and fully restoring public trust in RTE's corporate governance, because you were presiding over a massive bailout for RTE at that time. Uh, you're referring to the, the, the PAC meeting in October? Yep. Um, well, as I said earlier, I, I think you know, that, that was very much rooted in, in the future tense, as in it will now present a report, it will report, so it was future tense, um, and again, at that point, you know, it's of that PAC meeting, it's two days after the Mr. Collins pa um, ha had left, that it was announced that he had left RTE. Um, there was no reason to believe anything other than the DG had, had made that decision. But before, your, before you issued a bailout uh, in, in the <coughs> October budget, did you check to see what checks and balances RTE had in place? Um, did you... Did you look for any clarification in relation to the conditions of uh, issuing a massive bailout to the tune of 40 million to RTE? Um, well, it's, it's new era that, that do that work. Um, as you know, that they've been brought under new era. That's one of the future of media commission recommendations. And new era made the recommendation to us uh, on, on the amount to give RTE. But in terms of the, the, the current lie of the land within RTE, did you look for any of the actual reforms to see what the Renumeration Committee was doing in relation to restructuring? But it's, uh, it's, it's, it's new era that will do that. What we've said in, in relation to the 40 million euro, none of that has been given out yet. Um, and we said none of it will be given out until the check and balances of the reforms yeah. that we see what is taking place. Can I ask, when did you become aware of Rory Coveney's resignation deal in, <coughs> involved in exit package? In the committee hearing on February the 14th, um, and then I read that weekend that there was... And why do you think, why do you think RT didn't inform you that there was an exit package as, assigned to that's, that residence? That's why I, I asked on that. Um, I would have been aware from a meeting on July 6th, I think it was, that the, the DG had indicated he was intending to restructure uh, the team. Then I was informed that um, Rory Coveney had resigned, and it was my understanding he had resigned. Um, but then in the committee hearing on February 14th, it emerged that it was um, a, a package. 
Did you ask it That is time? one of the questions yeah. I, I asked the chair because I was looking for transparency in that, in that meeting in relation to transparency. I asked, had she any knowledge that it was a, an exit package? Um, as a, because I presume she hadn't or I would have been told. Um, and she, she admitted then that she forgot to, to tell me um, that, that it was a pretty hectic time and she, she forgot to, to tell me. And would you say that the non-disclosure of this deal has led to a suspicion of mistrust? Um, no, what I've said is that that, that again, is, is, you know, it's about me receiving the accurate information. And it, that was, again, a, a case a big, where I didn't a, receive. A big issue here is that, and RT are guilty of it as well, is that if you don't ask the right questions, you don't get the information. But again, the, the understanding in July is certainly that the, that is an operational matter for the DG um, and that it was a straightforward resignation. That's what I was told. Um, and it's an operational matter for the DG, so that, that's the line that I don't cross, which I've been very consistent on um, all through these eight months. One final question, uh, Chair. Just to ensure maximum transparency, and you've referenced it a few times, Will you expedite the publication of the, the aggregate exit packages to be published by RTE, which um, will be included in their annual uh, audit? I've, I've, I've asked for that, and even last Thursday, that was one of the conversations that was had. I asked the officials to follow up and on the, the Monday and Wednesday meetings and, and ask for them to pursue that. And is it forthcoming? Um, the, I'm waiting for them to get back. I think they were checking with their with their auditors, but we want to get it ahead, if if possible, definitely ahead of. Instead of having to wait to see it, like we will all see it uh, in, in the summer, I think it'd be very helpful to get that as soon yeah. as possible. Thank you.